Hello, my name is Szymon Kwas and I'm a software engineer at Collabora Productivity. In this talk, I would like to present you the recent improvements in the JS Dialogs. I will split my presentation into two parts. In the first part, I will explain what the JS Dialogs is and also what we achieved in Collabora Online thanks to that. In the second part, I will show you the recent development and improvements I did over the past year. We can describe JS Dialogs as a framework to share user interface components between the LibreOffice and Collabora Online. It allows us to improve both products at the same time. So for example, when we add a new feature to the Collabora Online, we also add that to uh, LibreOffice. General idea is very simple. We take the desktop application user interface, we describe it uh, in JSON format, then we send that JSON to the client web browser and we recreate the new interface using that description. Communication works in both directions. So when user does some input into controls, then the message is sent back to the server and processed by the original widgets. As we send only the abstract description in our JSON messages, we can interpret that in many ways. So for example, for mobile users, we can prepare different user interface than for the desktop ones. Initially, JS Dialogs were introduced to provide advanced editing options to the mobile Collabora Online. We reused for that the sidebar transformed to mobile friendly wizard. From the technical point of view, it wasn't a perfect solution as it was using the full JSON for the whole sidebar. So every time we did an action, we had to receive a big file. Also, uh, we, we supported only the synchronous mode, so we didn't know about any asynchronous event, which uh, could be present in, in the meantime between our uh, requests. Also, we needed to implement some complex widget uh, in uh, JavaScript because it, it wasn't possible to uh, send uh, all the needed information inside the JSON. Later JS dialogs were extended to notebook bar and dialogs. Thanks to reusing the welding mechanism introduced by Kaylan McNamara for GTK3, we were able to introduce the asynchronous events. From that moment, it was possible to receive information about actions user did on the widgets. On this slide, you can see an example of welded widget reused in the Collabora Online. It was the style previous widget from the Nogdu bar, which shows the currently used styles for paragraphs in Writer. Now we will take a look what was changed since the last conference. First, I was focused on the optimization. To avoid sending the full JSON every time we do some actions, I prepared three different types of messages. First, a full window update. It's used for the initial creation of dialog or some other component. It's sent only only the one time and later when we receive some updates from any widget, we use the second type, a single widget update. It sends only the updated widget content, so we don't have to waste uh, time on generating the JSON for the full dialog. The last type of messages is action message 
uh, which is used uh, only for small updates inside one widget when it doesn't uh, need to redraw everything. So for example, when we have the icon view and we only change the selection, we send the action with actual position to select. Thanks to that uh, optimization, we reduced transfer size a lot and also now we receive faster updates. It was visible especially for the widgets where we draw something on a canvas, like in uh, icon views or for example a previews in the notebook bar. Now it's also possible to update some other widget when we are typing inside the input field. So it was also uh, a big change in the user experience because we see the updates in, in real time, not only after uh, we finish typing. Next optimization uh, was introduced by using the shared queue for messages. Thanks to that we can reduce number of messages because we can uh, remove few of them from the queue. For example, when we receive the full update, we don't want and we don't need uh, all the previous messages, so we can simply remove them. Another small update is lazy message generation. So in the queue, we have only the information which widget was updated and uh, what kind of update it was but we generate uh, just uh, JSON just before we send it. After I finished with optimizations, I looked at missing widgets. One of them was uh, icon view, which is very useful to present set of uh, custom previews. For example, fontworks. Originally in the fontwork dialog, uh, canvas was used for presenting the previews, but I decided to rework re that to reuse icon view because it's a native widget supported, for example, in GTK3, so it will be better to uh, reuse the system widget for that. Also, it helped uh, with the online because we can have smaller updates, not uh, we don't have to. Uh, draw the whole canvas every time we select some preview. Style previews in the notebook bar also were converted into icon view because it helped with the uh, user experience when uh, we have a lot of styles and we want to uh, find a correct one in the long list. Uh, previously we had to click many times in the buttons but now we can just scroll and see all the styles uh, we have in the document. The most complex widget which was missing on the online site was the tree view. It appears in many different dialogues and can have multiple modes of displaying the content. For example, it can be a list view, it can be a tree view with checkboxes or without. It can show notes on demand. And also it supports uh, drag and drop in some dialogues, like for example, the pivot table dialog. We implemented all these different uh, modes and thanks to that, now we have uh, many useful features converted to JS dialogues like um, auto filter pop-ups with uh, tree view for selecting uh, filters and also pivot table dialog uh, where we can uh, compose a table uh, using drag and drops between between many trivials. When we finished with implementing missing widgets for JS dialogues I switched the sidebar to use the JS dialogues so now we have native HTML controls for the sidebar and we can style it using the CSS. It also improves the user experience 
uh, for example on tablet devices uh, because previously we used the um, canvas on which we were drawing the images of of the sidebar now the scrolling and also list boxes are handled by the browser with sidebar i introduced uh, to the js dialog support for drop downs now in both toolboxes and also menu buttons we can open the drop down with some complex content also i introduced new sidebar panel where we can edit the selected font work js dialog now as a framework looks uh, almost complete i think only few small or less important widgets are missing uh, i think the next step is to switch all the dialogues in the online to use the js dialogues instead of pixel based dialogues that's all i have for today thank you very much for listening